Even though you can pre-trim clips in the source monitor, you'll do most of your clip trimming inside a sequence inside the timeline panel. The most commonly used editing tools are the trim tool, the ripple edit tool, and the rolling edit tool. We're going to work with the trim tool in this lesson. We'll work with the Ripple Edit tool and the Rolling Edit tool in the next lesson. So to follow along, go to the Working Files folder, open up Projects, and then open up 0602 Trim Tool. We have a sequence here called Bike Riding Sequence, and we've got six clips, Bike Riding 1 through 6. I want you to put all six clips on the sequence. Click on the first one, Shift-click on the sixth one, and then drag them all over to the sequence so they all line up on video one and audio one, just like that. I want you to notice a couple of things right off the bat. If you look in the upper left and upper right hand corners of the clips, you'll see little triangles, little gray triangles there. And where they're connected, it looks like a half of a diamond. If I drag a clip off to the right here, you'll see that it's actually just two triangles pushed together. These little triangles indicate that you are looking at the full original clip. There are no head or tail frames that have been trimmed away. This is the full clip. And Premiere Pro does this as kind of a reminder that if you want to put a transition between these two clips, there won't be any overlapping head or tail frames that'll make the transition go really smoothly. You can still put a transition there, but that's what those little triangles mean. Those triangles are going to go away when we start trimming things in just a moment. Another thing I want you to notice is just the text at the top of each clip. Let me just expand the view here. I'm going to put the current time indicator at the beginning of the sequence by pressing the home key. That's the keyboard shortcut to move it to the beginning of the sequence, end takes it to the end of the sequence. Let's go back home here. I'm going to zoom in by dragging this little zoom bar here to the left to expand the view. Then you can see all the words here. It says bike riding 1 MP4, V in square brackets and A in square brackets. V means the video portion of a linked audio and video clip and A means audio. This opacity thing over here refers to this yellow line. This is called the rubber band or the control line for opacity. If I drag it down, for example, it drops the opacity such that it gets dark there. In fact, it'll go black if I drag it down really far. Halfway, it gets kind of gray. We're going to talk about this little opacity line later. And it's not just an opacity line. If you hit this drop-down list here, there are many other things that it can represent. But it just represents whatever is currently selected from this list. I'm telling you this because when you hover your cursor over the end or the beginning of the clip, it'll go from, let's say, this trim tool to this little rubber band controlling tool back to the trim tool. And I want to make sure that when you use the trim tool. It's not this little rubber band control tool with the up and down arrows there. It's this big red thing or a big yellow thing like that or a big four arrow red thing like that. To get the view back so you can see all the clips that you've got inside your sequence, press the backslash key. The backslash key is the keyword shortcut to show you all the clips inside your sequence. All right, what I want to do is I want to trim these clips a little bit. Now we've trimmed them before inside the source monitor, but now we're going to trim them here from scratch. So let's start off by trimming this first clip where the Riders come into the frame there. I want to start a little bit farther into the clip. Let's say right about there. Now you can start wherever you want, but that's where I'm going to start where the riders are already well onto the path. And I want to trim away the beginning of the clip to that point. If I hover my cursor over the beginning, it turns into this big fat red thing. That's the trim tool. If I hover over the end, it points the other direction, but it again is a trim tool. It's saying that you're going to trim away the tail frames here or the head frames here of this clip. If I go a little bit farther, it'll go to the next clip, and you'll be trimming away the head frames of the next clip, or the tail frames of that clip, and so on down the line. If I let it slide down a bit, it turns in that little rubber band controlling tool. Don't want that. A little bit farther, we're back to the trim tool. All right? I want to trim away the head frames here. So I'm just going to hover it there, and then click and drag. And as I click and drag, I'm going to snap it to the current time indicator. It makes a very accurate edit that way. Here we go. It's going to go snap. And we've now snapped to the current time indicator and made that really precise trim edit, which means that the clip will now start right there. Here we go, and it starts, boom, right there. Now you've probably noticed a little problem here. We've got this great big gap here. What do we do about that? Well, we're gonna do a ripple delete. Just right click in the gap and select the only thing you can select, ripple delete. And that deletes that gap and slides everything over to fill the gap. We're gonna avoid that extra step when we use the ripple edit tool in the next lesson, but for now we'll deal with that gap here as we make these edits. Now I want to trim away some of the end of the clip. So I'm going to go along here until they get out of frame. I kind of want to make a relatively accurate edit here. So when they get right about there, if I keep on dragging the current time indicator, it's kind of an awkward way to really accurately line up the current time indicator because my hand is not so smooth. 
So I'm going to move the current I'm indicated to the right one frame at a time by using the right arrow key. Right goes forward in time, left goes back in time. So let's go forward in time till they just get out of frame. Maybe a couple more frames there, one, two. So I've now moved them out of frame. So now I want to trim the end of the clip to that point. So I hover my cursor over the end like that, where it's pointing into the clip. Click and drag it over, and boom, we have now edited that clip. Let's just see what it looks like. Here they start. And there is the end of that clip, and it goes to black again, of course. Well, we want to get rid of that gap, so we do a ripple delete, right click, ripple delete, and slide everybody over. Okay, so we made our first edit. Goes from there, and now it goes to the next clip. And let's see. Well, we got a long, long wait here while they arrive on the scene. So we obviously want to trim away some of the beginning of this clip too. So move the current time indicator to the point where they just come in the clip there. Use your left arrow key to back up. So they're just out of frame, a couple of frames out of frame. I think you get what I mean. We're talking frames here when they're 30 frames per second. I'm talking about this being the frame and they're out of frame when they're off the left-hand side there. So I'm gonna go one, now they're off frame, a couple more frames back, and now we've got a good edit point. And I can trim the beginning of the clip right up to that line. So I'm gonna hover my cursor over the beginning of the clip so it's pointing in, not to the left, but to the right so it's pointing in. I click and I drag it over. Boom, and I've now made that nice trim. Of course, I have this ugly gap there, but we're gonna take care of that by right-clicking and saying ripple delete. Here we go. So let's see how that edit works. This really is an edit now as opposed to just a trim. We've now put two clips together and we hope that this edit will be kind of a smooth edit as they go from one shot to the next. And here they come. And that worked pretty darn well. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can take this right to the end of the clip by pressing the down arrow key and it'll go to the edit point between two clips. When you go to the edit point, it actually goes to the first frame of the next clip. And if you're at the end of your sequence, it goes to black. It'll be the frame after the last clip. So if I do the left arrow key, that'll be the last frame of the previous clip. If you follow that, down arrow key takes me to the beginning of the next clip. I go back one frame, I'm at the end of the previous clip. I want to make a trim here before they're that far away. Maybe right about here, I'll make a trim. So I'm going to take my trim tool, my selection tool, which turns into a trim tool, hover it over the right side of that clip so it's pointing in and trim to that point. Well, the next shot, I don't necessarily want the next one to be this shot because it's a low angle shot of them coming into the scene again, which would be redundant. It's a low angle here going out of the scene, also redundant. So I want this point of view shot, this bike rider number five. If I hover my cursor over it, it'll say what it is in case you can't read the entire thing. It also says how long it is. It's 13 seconds and seven frames. So I want to just pick this thing up at some point. So I'm just going to play it. I'm going to take my up arrow key to go to the beginning. And I'm just going to press the space bar and play. And right about there is where it, the camera sort of settles down, or I have the camera settled down. I'm carrying this camera in one hand and riding the bike with the other. So I want to trim up to that point. I've already got a little trim there because I just happened to hit the trim tool when I was near that edit point. So I'm going to click away to deselect that trim. And now I'm going to click on this one again, I'll hover my cursor over there toward the beginning so it's pointing in, click to actually put an edit point there. You can actually place edit points and clips, so they'll stay there. And now I'm just going to pull it toward the current time indicator. There we go. And now we're done there. Now I'm going to go forward a little ways just by pressing the space bar. There we go. I think that's far enough. I noticed the camera kind of shook off there to the right. So I'm going to back up a few frames with my left arrow key. To right there, it's a good spot, I think. I want to trim to that point now from the right. So I hover my cursor over so it's pointing in, trim to it, there you go. And now I want to drag that clip over here. So I'm going to use a keyboard modifier. I'm going to drag it from here without a keyboard modifier. I don't need that because I'm not worried about filling the gap here. I'm going to drag it over there. I'm going to drag it to this spot, and it's probably a little bit bigger than the clips next to it. So I'm going to press the control of the command key, and that'll slide everybody to the right, leaving a little gap there, which is actually okay right now. So I got three clips. Let's see what it looks like from one to the next here. Out, in, and now we're going down a little ways, and now we've got the point of view shot. Very good, there you go. Now I want to use the end of bike riding number two, which we kind of covered up a little while ago. So I want to use the end of that clip. So I want to go back here and get bike riding number two again. Bring it onto the sequence here, over here. And I'm going to go in there a little ways and get the tail end of that one, right about there. I'm going to pick it up, right about there. So I want to trim to that point. So 
I'm going to drag it over next to the one we just did. And there might not be enough room there, but if there's not, I'll just press the controller command key to slide things over. And now I've made this little four clip sequence here. We'll go from there to there. And now to the far away shot as they go along. Very good. And now I want to get the point of view shot as they finish the ride here, number six. Now here's the camera just moving over right at that point. If you look up here, you can see that we're one minute, 12 seconds, and 16 frames into the sequence, which is, you know, full of gaps here. So that's not really the length of the sequence, but that's where we are right now. So I want to go back about three seconds. So I want to go back to about 109.16 or so, 109 something. Dragging back to 109 something there, right about there. I'm going to trim to that point. Now I want to go into it a little ways. The camera moves over, move along. Eh, that's probably far enough right there. I'm going to trim to that current time indicator right there. I'm going to slide this guy over. Hold down the controller command key to slide everybody else over. That'll be our last shot, kind of a long last shot. As we go along the little creek here and... There we go, and just continue on our little ride here. I could probably stop it right there if I wanted to, but that's basically how it works. Trim that over like so. And the rest of these guys here, I'm not going to use them this time around. You know, I'm just not going to use these clips. So I'm just going to select them, click on one, and delete it like that. Or I'll go Control Z to undo that, Command Z to undo that. Or I can marquee select both of them by taking my cursor here below them and just dragging a marquee around them and pressing delete that way to get rid of them. And now I'm going to press my backslash key so you can see all the clips in their full glory. And now I'm going to play through here and see how it looks. We've got this little 24 second sequence. Here we go. Go out of frame, into the frame. Go to the point of view shot now. Very nice. Go to the distance shot. We're using the same clip twice, but different parts of it. To another point of view shot. We pan to the left and finish this little sequence off. So here we've edited these clips on the timeline. We did not pre-edit them in the source monitor. We just dropped them straight on the timeline and then trimmed them in the timeline. There are some other ways that you can trim to avoid those gaps that we had to delete. And you can also use something called a rolling edit tool to sort of adjust the edits between two clips. And we'll deal with those two tools in the next lesson.